Howdy folks. Okay perhaps not the best greeting given the accent. How about, top of the morning to ya? Or, ahoy matey. Put another shrimp on the barbie. I think I'll go with a good old Dr. Nick impersonation. You know Dr. Nick yeah? A man more than famous, he's infamous, with one of a kind knowledge in the field of medicine, praised for his successful triple bypass on Homer Simpson. A generous man billing Homer a mere $129.95 for his services. In fact Dr. Nick has recently declared a mass diagnosis for those, me included, brazen enough to give consensus reality the finger, embracing a God-given right and inner calling to come to grips on the true nature of reality on our own terms, blossoming towards discovery of our true self and limitless potential in the process. Dr. Nick has coined this syndrome as a case of having a quote-unquote, shakening baconing awakening. Along with his recommended prescription of taking a healthy dose of Guatemalan insanity peppers three times a day. I think he might be onto something. So let's get to the impersonation. Hi everybody. Let me try that again. Hi everybody. This is where you respond with a, hi Dr. Nick. I know it's been quite some time since sharing but please do not let that imply some sort of slowdown in this journey as in fact it's been quite the opposite, with the past few weeks flooding in a whole new realm of potential, spawning astounding concepts and revelations about the nature of our reality, although I have yet to spontaneously learn Kung Fu. If only I was enlightened as to how one performs the Vulcan mind melt as indeed, the needs of the many outweigh the needs of the few. I suppose it will all be flushed out and brought to the surface in due time, now the primary intent of this video is to first and foremost demonstrate how not only we are being manipulated via liquid crystal based holographic imagery in our skies, but how each and every one of us via the immense electromagnetic field generated by our hearts, can quote unquote, manipulate the manipulators. That's right. Just as it is the influence of the Earth's electromagnetic field which is constructing this virtual LCD screen in the sky, our own electromagnetic field can manipulate this very grid. The result is the astounding display of celestial bodies soaring in the sky in every direction, as clearly demonstrated several times in my latest batch of videos. And the means to do this is so bloody easy, literally taking a mere 5 minutes and in no way do you need to be Chris Angel or David Blaine to do this, all of the power resides within each and every one of us. So before succumbing to the spontaneous and programmed reaction of thinking such an incredible display is some sort of hoax, how about finding it in your hearts, no pun intended, to go out and perform this yourself as the sheer magnitude of this manipulation and discovery alone is powerful enough to change the very nature of this mind game being foisted upon our race for good. This video will provide everyone with elementary steps to perform the exact same incredible demonstrations resulting in the appearance of celestial bodies drastically shifting position in the day or night sky while providing critical detail about the urgency and significance of such phenomena. So this whole moving the moon business, I think you are going to be rather surprised at the genuine simplicity behind such an astonishing act. And I would like to ask all of those who have been so inclined to react spontaneously to these demonstrations, think about what is truly behind the driving force eliciting such knee-jerk and steadfast rejections. Think about how it could be that something you so passionately felt was your quote-unquote, truth and beliefs, in regards to the nature of our reality could have been so blatantly misguided. Think about what it was exactly that triggered such a rejection. Was it the genuineness of the rock-solid information? testimony, and footage, or was it a selective set of keywords and concepts, perhaps pertaining to otherworldly nature, that spawned such a wrongful conclusion? And please consider if it's possible to be so mistaken in this regard, what else out there about the nature of our reality may we all have been duped and subsequently mistaken about? Because I will be the first to admit less than two years ago I had no bloody clue to any of this, but what can I say? It's frickin' real and we have been provided the opportunity to not only deal with this in accordance with the force of light in this universe who is guiding us along the way, but we have the opportunity to become this bloody force of light, just as we are meant to be. Anyhow I put a handful of diagrams together to articulate exactly what is taking place here all the way down to the quantum mechanics. 
As clearly demonstrated in my prior videos we are undoubtedly being blasted on a daily basis not only with quote unquote, chemtrails, but more specifically with substances whose physical properties, corresponding geometric patterns, rotational and directional alignment, and distinctive optical patterns are all a precise match to liquid crystals. I will provide more detail about this later but the days of debating this are over. These substances which are illuminating our skies like Mr. Burns' nuclear power plant, consequently leading to record-shattering atmospheric and celestial illumination, resulting in Looney Tunes phenomena such as the supermoon, while leading to record-shattering warm temperatures going on 18 months straight now across the United States correspond 100% liquid crystals. In the event you're still skeptical well just hold your horses as you will soon be able to confirm this yourselves, the only requirement being a willful heart, and a camera. So what's the significance of liquid crystals? I mean what are these bloody substances, and why go through the effort of covertly blanketing skies across the world with this shite? These are great questions and let's just say it has only been upon continuous series of profound and synchronistic experiences have I been able to quote unquote, attract, this knowledge to me. In the event you're not familiar with liquid crystals they indeed are the very same substances used in HD and plasma displays which have penetrated modern society. This is no coincidence mind you. And in the event you always were a bit dumbfounded why a government would spend hundreds of millions, subsidizing a push to higher definition during a global recession, well your intuition was bloody correct. This had absolutely nothing to do with some global compassion about the world's need to be able to better see zits on faces, more about this later. So what's so special about liquid crystals? I mean they are used in televisions, who cares right? Well first you need to understand what makes these substances ideal for use in HD displays. You see these liquid crystalline substances are remarkable, known in modern times as its own state of matter. I would go one step further and express that this entire reality is one of crystalline illusory nature. For more about this please see my video, everything is sound. Imagine dumping a bunch of molecular crystals out on a table. They would just pour out. Nothing fancy right? I would agree, however now introduce an electromagnetic field. Guess what, these substances demonstrate what I would be inclined to say aligns to following an instruction set, or intelligence. You see when you plug your television in the wall and power it up, it is the corresponding electromagnetic field generated which aligns these bloody suckers into the incredibly precise and minuscule grid of pixels on the screen. Yes this is what is behind your retina display, or the screen you are using now to view this video. Now did you know that electric current is not even close to being the only source of electromagnetic field available? In fact you yourself are a massive electromagnetic field, which I will get to more later. But surely everyone is familiar with the electromagnetic field generated by the earth? Well let's just say without this immense field we would all be toast via an onslaught of solar radiation and remember this as it will become extremely relevant in just a bit. So I'm going to provide much more detail about all this later but the point is these substances may seem ordinary but there is nothing ordinary about them, it is upon the introduction of an electromagnetic field where they demonstrate seeming intelligence, taking it upon themselves to rotate in unison and align themselves so that they can link together forming long range directional order. But that's not all, these extraordinary substances are waveguides, that is they channel electromagnetic frequencies. And no it's not just visible light they can channel, although that is the only frequency wave spectrum which we then decode into quote unquote, colors, but they channel the bloody EMF spectrum including radiation. So these substances in the sky facilitate two important things, first they align into a grid of waveguides which can channel light, or in other words they form into a virtual LCD screen in the sky. And yes projecting corresponding holographic imagery in the sky is as easy as projecting holographic images onto a television. Secondly these substances channel more than light, they channel electromagnetic radiation. Where would EMF radiation come from? The majority of it originates from the sun, but as we all know we live in an EMF cesspool with our satellite and mobile communications, dirty electric grid, bloody HD antennas. 
what happens when I refer to as molecular highways are present in the atmosphere which allow EMF and solar radiation to freely penetrate it, no longer being obscured by the protective elements in the atmosphere, water, oxygen, etc. That's right, it is the same effect as cranking up the frickin' radiation dial, or in other words it significantly heightens our exposure to levels we were never meant for. But I want to get back to this moving the moon business. I mentioned prior it is the influence of an electromagnetic field, sourced by the Earth, which is behind the construction of this virtual liquid crystal grid in the sky. As well light is being channeled down this grid of waveguides in the atmosphere. Want to know why atmospheric and celestial illumination is off the charts? It's because light is being channeled in the atmosphere resulting in greater illumination. So when you are gazing up in the night sky, at say the Goliath supermoon, you are indeed seeing light which is not traversing in a traditional sky, the light is traversing down molecular crystalline tubes. Ah but if it is the Earth's electromagnetic field which is constructing and manipulating this crystalline grid in the sky, what else do you suppose can do the exact same thing? I mentioned prior that we all are electromagnetic powerhouses, and I'm going to later get into some of the research that has been conducted which demonstrates the sheer power of the electromagnetic field generated by our hearts, but in short if this is truly a virtual grid in the sky then our fields, when amped up appropriately, should be able to manipulate it, correct? Well damn straight, and this is exactly what is taking place in the incredible displays I have provided of what appears to be a controlled moving of the sun and moon in the sky, in all directions. Back to these diagrams, so these random molecular structures are being dumped in the skies via chemtrails and false cloud formations. Upon the influence of the Earth's electromagnetic field these quote-unquote, random structures, rotate, align, and link together forming a precise geometric grid, more specifically in accordance with sacred geometry and the flower of life. This again is no coincidence mind you and if you want to get deep not only is our entire reality one of crystalline structures, interwoven together in the pattern of the flower of life, but all of it is governed by electromagnetism. What are the sources of electromagnetism? Consciousness. What are we? We are eternal consciousness in the form of electromagnetic energy contained within the crystalline structures of our bodies. Want to know how we have the power to alter our external, crystalline reality? because it is governed by electromagnetism, and we are electromagnetic entities. But I'll have to save this for another time. So we've established the grid of waveguides in the atmosphere which are channeling light. What do you suppose happens when you introduce another electromagnetic field into the mix? You got it, and let this be an example of just how bloody powerful we truly are. Our own electromagnetic field absolutely can manipulate this crystalline grid in the sky. In short the molecular tubes in which the light is traversing, they shift position due to the influence of a secondary field. So why is it we do not pick up on this all too well when simply looking at the moon? Well first off our eyes are moving with our bodies which are moving in conjunction with our electromagnetic torsion fields, however as an abundance of individuals have affirmed the moon absolutely can and will experience a slight wobble if your field is quote unquote, revved up appropriately. I'll get into revving up your hearts later but in short our fields, are magnitudes stronger when in accordance with positive emotion, thought, compassion, light and love. Want to strengthen your field? Express yourself in accordance with positive states of being which yield vastly higher vibrational resonation. My own field has been revving up to levels I would have never thought even attainable as a natural side effect to the amount of heart and soul I am putting into all of this. But let me state now there is absolutely nothing different between me and my experience and all of you. I have just been able to tap into an extraordinary potential residing in each and every one of us. So this wobble was actually the first thing I noticed which spawned me to explore this further. In short the key to manipulating this illusory screen in the sky is as follows. First you need a fixed focal, in this case it is the lens of the camera. Why do you need a fixed focal? Well it is the altering path the light is traversing which results in the astounding displays of movement in the sky, thus it's critical to establish a fixed focal. I typically like to hold the camera close to the bottom of my chin, towards my heart. Now while maintaining original position of the camera, 
Simply shift the body position by bending the knees, leaning from side to side, extending upward, etc. Again the more still the camera the greater results achieved. Now the movement of the camera as seen in my videos is literally only a centimeter or two, totally insignificant for what is taking place here. And before the knee-jerk responders want to imply any sort of camera movement could result in these displays, think about how bloody far away these celestial bodies are, in the case of the sun 93 million miles away. Do you truly think any movement of a camera could result in an object that far away changing position in the sky whatsoever? I mean you could fly up into the sky and the sun is still going to be at the same point in the horizon as it was when you were on the ground. So there you have it, an illusory effect far greater than any stage show magician, and why? It's because the illusion is already there in the sky, we simply have the ability to manipulate it. And this gets me to the point where I want to underscore the significance of this, and forgive me if I come across as rather blunt about it but we're so far into this now and although we are absolutely marching our way through this, particularly in the quote unquote, unseen aspects of our reality, there still is a bloody sense of urgency to all of this. This illusory effect, 100%, without a shred of doubt, is a refutable indication of liquid crystal based holographic manipulation in our skies period. There is no more debate and as mentioned earlier anyone with a willful heart and a camera can go prove this out in five minutes. Toss aside the overabundance of scientific observations, physical properties and distinctive geometric patterns, rotational and orientational alignment, specific observations regarding liquid crystal phase and state transition, and overwhelming measurable optical patterns. Overlook the corresponding abundance of extraordinary anomalies with the sun moon, the super duper moon, planetary bodies, atmospheric illumination, ludicrous weather anomalies. Toss aside the 20 years of research and testimonies regarding the chemtrail phenomena, and props to all of those courageous to take a stand on this while others, including myself less than two years ago, succumbed to the conditional arc and programming of the mind. Forget the fact that it is so blatantly obvious now that the entire global warming charade was an attempt at having a mainstream explanation for these very events and corresponding earthly side effects, which has led to the United States getting cooked, literally, resulting in the warmest 18-month period ever on record in the history of the United States, the warmest single month ever on record, more record highs broken in more cities at a higher rate ever on record. We're talking cooked folks and why? It's because these liquid crystals are channeling the entire EMF spectrum, microwaves included. These illusions in the sky can now be quote unquote, moved, by anyone, at any time, and by this single fact alone there is no longer any other conclusion that can be made. Come on my fellow brethren, we have been blessed with God-given intellects and soulful hearts. The only reason this would be a difficult conclusion to make is if the conditioned mind were to make it such. This is a bloody no-brainer and it's been going on daily for at least two years straight. So again what exactly is the significance in all of this? Well first it proves without a doubt we are being manipulated via holographic technology in the sky. Second it demonstrates the presence of liquid crystals and without a doubt affirms that all of these quote-unquote, conspiracy theorists as they have so conveniently been labeled, knew what they were bloody talking about. It also substantiates 100% what I have been saying since the spring of 2011, that we are being irradiated via heightened exposure to solar and DMF radiation. And if you're truly courageous you can follow these aspects very easily up the chain to the very real truth we are not alone, and not by a long shot, and the only way something of this magnitude could have ever been pulled off is by either total complacency or cooperation by our lovely powers at B. Do you see any of the institutions of influence and control spreading awareness to any of this? Oh but what about our religious institutions, surely they couldn't have been compromised. There are two sources which I will stand by which have nailed this, the work of David Icke, and the spiritual wisdom of the Gnostics, particularly their depictions of electromagnetic mind parasites they dubbed as the Archons. All of these other quote-unquote, conspiracy theorists, such as Alex Jones? The primary method to this mind game is to plant either conscious or subconscious thought into the human psyche so that it then festers into mass consensus belief, subsequently manifesting into our reality via our very real power to create. 
So my view on anyone who is simply spreading fear about possibilities and isn't going any further, they either willfully or have been duped into feeding right into this arcan mind game and system of manipulation. Personally I believe in the good of all people thus duped is more like it, but these arcans have mastered techniques of manipulation, and with holographic manipulation in real time in our skies as well as the screens in our homes, well they now have the single most powerful form of global manipulation ever established. But enough about these arcan parasites, let me bring this thing to a close. I want to emphasize that although the road to acceptance to this is absolutely a difficult one, likely bringing about an initial reaction of worry about the state of our world and what is to come, we are absolutely in control of our own destiny. I have been quote unquote, dancing, with these forces daily going on two years straight. I will tell you right now despite being exposed and enlightened to both true horrors and wonders, not a moment goes by when I shed a single ounce of fear or worry about what's in store in the future. Why? Well first off there is no quote unquote, past or future, as it is only the moment which we experience and have control over. Sure the present moment may allow one to reminisce about moments prior or speculate on what is to come, but without the present moment there would be no past or future now, would there? But more about that later. It's because this entire thing is all transpiring as designed, and although I completely recognize my own experience being one of pure wonder and uniqueness, it is still a unique expression of our collective human experience. So many insights and boosters of my own faith have been provided by the words and actions of others, what I have referred to as a code of light being provided to us in the form of music, please see the playlist on my channel, Code of Light, for more. The courage, heart and soul demonstrated by so many of you. None of what is taking place is by mere chance, and it all has to do with continuing to demonstrate heart and belief in ourselves and in each other. How in the world is it I have found myself in such a bloody extraordinary position? Well I went to hell and back to get to this point, but the short answer is I quote unquote, attracted it to me, via the powerful expressions I made in the years leading up to this, expressions of a willful heart and soul, expressions that I would never give up, never lose my faith, and would never stop believing. My experience and corresponding knowledge is not to shed light about the fact we are being dominated by an otherworldly presence, that our ancient ancestors got this bloody right, and that Harkins, electromagnetic mind parasites, were indeed real. It's not about the fact we are being covertly irradiated and totally bent over by the powers at be. This is about who we truly are as a race. It's about the fact that we are not simply a random anomaly carrying out random lives on a random planet in a random solar system. We are not merely a product of random chemistry and Darwinian misnomers. We are not even alone. We are all something far greater than what we have been led to believe, and most important of all we are remembering. This is about blossoming into our true potential. It's about getting back to our inherent roots of loving each other, of loving ourselves. It's about a long forgotten connection we all have to a greater presence in this universe. Refer to it as the divine presence if you will. We have been so badly duped into living out a twisted reality, almost entirely losing our connection to each other, our connection to the divine. We are a race who has had our hearts ripped out of us. We are a race who has almost entirely had any resemblance of true faith ripped apart from us. But not quite, because we are the race the generation who is destined to change it all. We are not alone in this and there is a force out there who is putting it all on the line to help us through this very difficult time. But we need to help ourselves. We need to believe in ourselves and in each other. We have all been blessed with incredible gifts, including the gift of imagination, correct? To dream of new beginnings, new creations, of new possibilities. Well what's the point in having an imagination if we're simply going to toss it aside and adhere to a hand-me-down version of who we are, what we're capable of, what all possibilities are, what this reality is, furthermore handed down by a bunch of institutions who are now blatantly showing their true colors, fully succumbing to arc and dominance and manipulation, subsequently not giving much of a damn about what any of us truly are, now do they? You want to know who truly cares about us? How about quote unquote, us? 
How about the spiritual teachers of the Gnostics and Gnostic Christians who provided a firm warning and overwhelming detail about this very real arc and threat to humanity? Where is love being offered in a world so deprived of it? How about in this video? How about in others who have fostered the courage to open their eyes up to the obvious and now in your face version of reality that matches truth as opposed to bliss? I've been at this for two years straight pouring my heart and soul into bringing forward details about my incredible experience despite the bludgeoning of arc and conditioned reactions from the public. I have been bringing forward detail after detail about the nature of our reality and events unfolding citing such an abundance of testimony, footage, and hardcore evidence, tying it to historic and mainstream knowledge, demonstrating things such as moving the bloody moon. I need your help everyone. We need your help. Please just have the courage to spread the word. Mass awareness is first and foremost, yet it is our true demonstration of faith which will catapult us through this. But this is not to imply there is not an enormous amount of trying, testing, and unraveling efforts required by all of us in the moments to come, but upon gaining an understanding of the sheer universal and divine magnitude of what is taking place, an event which has fostered unwavering attention and commitment from the forces of this world and beyond for generations, in the end it will be fully understood what this is truly about and what all of us are to gain coming out of such an extraordinary spiritual transformation, the process of light transformation, of vastly expanding our levels of awareness and potential, as it is truly analogous to all of us hitting the bloody universal lottery. The incredible one-of-a-kind uniqueness of our experience is one of cosmic proportion, of which not only will we cherish such a wonderful gift of an opportunity, the opportunity to embrace an everlasting appreciation for being both students and teachers, leaders and followers, as we learn, educate, and develop into our true potential for generations to come. We have been presented a one-of-a-kind opportunity to express ourselves in a way which has been designed to progress the very awareness and potential of the collective universe we are in forever will be a part of. The acts performed during this experience, sacrifices made, fears overcome, love and light expressed in no way are limited to make an impact, be acknowledged, and cherished in purely an earthly sense. We're talking about the opportunity to shine during this very moment of an eternal existence at the very front and center on a quote-unquote, divine stage. We have undergone such over-the-top and devious arc and programming it is now in our totally misguided nature to make such soulful decisions based upon material representations of self-interests, things such as careers, monopoly money, perceptions, aspects that don't even exist in the grand scheme of things. To think it possible to succumb to such surface and material illusions, fears of undergoing ridicule and rejection for a minuscule amount of cosmic time, unwilling to demonstrate in front of the eyes of the very divine presence what we're truly capable of, what we stand for, making a statement that will carry with us for all eternity, is mind-boggling ludicrous to say the least. This is the scale we're talking about here thus I wanted to put at ease any, completely understandable, worries, apprehensions, thoughts about some major catastrophic event or struggle, etc. which may be prevalent. We've been participating unknowingly in this major conflict for eons now so it's not at all about any of that. It's about the fact the end result of this conflict has been one where we have earned or attracted to us the experience of putting it to an end. We have been so badly conditioned to associate great conflict with bloodshed ingrained for millennia the thought that true might and power is based upon the limitations of an earthly sense, the limitations of the physical, when these are but illusory concepts derived in an illusory understanding of the true nature of our reality. This is a battle of the hearts, a battle of will, of commitment and determination, of unity, of heart and soul, and what can be thought of as universal vibration and do not be fooled into thinking without a physical representation of destructive aftermath from hard-fought battles, of soldiers in graves, physical powers overthrown, guns and lasers, wounds and scars, and perhaps heroes in the spotlight wearing spandex and masks, that battles cannot be fought and won, that there needs to be a broadcast on CNN or the BBC to generate a misperception of allies and enemies to determine who or what in the heck is being fought or what is even being fought for. We're talking about the magnificence of forces which reside in the realm of the unseen, 
We're talking about an ongoing battle being waged where I have had the privilege to be on the front lines. We're talking about human potential, weapons of mass creation, universal participation and cosmic headlines residing entirely in the realm of the unseen, so it should be absolutely no surprise the acts we continue performing to further push us down this path of transformation may very well predominantly reside outside of our limits of perception. Every single expression that is made in the spirit of this transformation, every thought, emotion, intent, action, sacrifice, fear overcome, word, heart, soul, vibrational resonance, commitment to belief, expression of undeniable faith, not only represents one of these soldiers on the battlefield, but it also determines which side of the battlefield you truly are on. Most important of all this is about overcoming the fear which has been and is preventing us from truly expressing who we truly are as a race, and exploding into the incredible manifestation of the limitless potential residing in each and every one of us. Again it doesn't matter if your acts or words, are met with the harshness of act and rejection, if the courage to share heartfelt material or knowledge with loved ones, persons in positions of influence, on YouTube, message boards, Facebook, wherever do not visibly generate any movement. It doesn't matter if within the limitations of five sense perception it appears as though nothing is changing, or that efforts are fruitless, simply because there are no physical indicators of such. Bottom line it is through our collective action where we are rapidly raising the vibrational level of the planet, where we are winning the battles in the realm of the unseen, where the power of the human heart is being shown to the entire universe. Be proud of who you are. Be proud to be an active participant in this very moment and every moment after, regardless of how you may perceive that moment to be. Never lose sight that we will never be alone in this, we never have been, and never lose sight of what it is that truly makes all of us stick, but most importantly always keep to heart what it is that makes your incredible uniqueness, your beliefs, your heart and soul, your limitless capacity for love your faith in yourself and in knowing you are destined to become something far greater than what you are now, that collectively represents all the magnificent and indescribable collection of divine wonders that you are, and always will be. I will provide much more insight into this aspect in due time, but for now know that you have a privileged and extraordinarily unique opportunity to pioneer the construction of this path to light, and it starts with simply staying true to yourselves having the courage to express your extraordinary uniqueness and committing yourselves to what may be a mere speck of artificial and material sacrifice in support of contributing to a cause infinitely greater, pressing forward with raising levels of awareness, enlightenment, and vibration despite reactions or rejections which have been constructed purely upon arch and deceit. My experience has brought me to an incredible understanding of just how deep this mind game goes, and in that despite having been a target of mass rejection, suppression, isolation, intimidation, manipulation, labeling, and ridicule for almost two years straight now, I realized long ago that those generating from my fellow brothers and sisters were nothing more than programs firing off at different levels, deeply seeded within the human psyche. What can non-substantial programs truly do to you at the end of the day? Not much of anything as in the end it is no different than if our automobiles were programmed to spit rejection out upon mustering up the courage to speak out about what you stand for. There is a critical reason why all of us are present here and now, during one of the most extraordinary periods in our entire existence, spanning far greater than the entirety of our existence, on a stage of truly cosmic proportion. It's up to all of us to define what exactly that unique reason is, but it starts with understanding that reason will forever lie within the moment of existence you are in, now, and forever after, and this will never change. We may view our experience in the form of ups and downs, a culmination of memories, of a journey from start to finish in an experience we have dubbed as life, but no there is only ever one thing that you are and will forever be, and it is whatever you are at the current moment of your life. Without your very moment of existence or of reflection there would be no prior moments, no prior memories, ups, downs. Even in the seemingly most difficult of times the moment you need to recognize and love more than ever is the current moment in your life, a moment in an everlasting journey towards achieving greatness. Keep your eyes open and your hearts singing everyone. Please stay tuned for more.
as well I will be posting regularly on my channel comments and the David Icke and Avalon forums. Take care and God bless, T. Sakla, P.S. Remember if you feel you're suffering from shakening baconing awakening syndrome it's 3 Guatemalan insanity peppers per day. And how is this for synchronicity, I'm currently in Dublin and what was just on the telly. Not only was it the Simpsons but it was the chili cook-off episode. What's that smell? Onions? Chili powder? Cumin? Juicy ground chuck? It's chili? Oh, my god, I'm missing the chili cook-off? They say he carved the spoon himself, from a bigger spoon. Ha 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 ha. Goodbye everybody.